Sound like we're about ready for camp meeting around this place. Amen. I'm ready. We could just have that revival breakout right here. I was watching something today, and they said that they were a group of them got into the upper room in Jerusalem the other day, and all of a sudden, just spontaneously, the power of God came down. People started singing, praising God, rejoicing, praying through. I mean, it's a wonderful thing. Revival is in the air. All we have to do is just get in the middle of it. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father God in heaven, we're so thankful to again be back in the house of the Lord one more time. And God, I thank you that we have a God that understands us, one that is touched with the feeling of our infirmity, moved with compassion for every one of our needs. Father, I thank you for all of your saints that are here. Lord, those that are viewing from home. Father, I thank you, God, for those that have come to receive of you. And Lord, give us of your anointing in this house. Let the Spirit of God prevail in all things. That, Lord, everything be done to your glory, O God, and, Lord, to your honor. And, Father, we'll bless your mighty name. In Jesus' loving name, amen. amen. Becky's going to have the lesson for you, and she'll get with you ahead of time on that so you can be prepared, and then you just come and teach our wonderful kids. So if you're willing to do that, please sign up in the back. Amen. <coughs> Let's pray over it all. Thank you for the offering to nurture to the kingdom. Our prayer. Amen. 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 <coughs>
Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the opportunity to come back, give back into your kingdom, Lord. We thank you for the many blessings you put into our life, Lord. We ask that you take, receive, and multiply these offerings and bless the givers they have purposed in their heart, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
How many have come into the house of the Lord seeking something from Christ? Amen. I know there are needs in this house. All we've got to do is turn our face towards Him and call in His name. He hears and He answers our prayer. Amen. Let's pray. Father God in heaven, I thank you again for your saints that are here tonight. I thank you for Brother Danny, our pastor. Lord, back in the house of God again, twice in the same day. Lord, I thank you for his speedy recovery. Lord, we know that he's not 100%, but God, he's getting there. And you're with your help, oh Lord, he is making it. And Father, I pray that God, for all of these that are here, and Lord, some that we've spoken to earlier that were sick in body, but now they're feeling fine. Lord, just to be in your presence, just to be in your presence, ignite something down deep inside of us. Your healing virtue flows, Lord, to meet every part and every aspect of our life. And Father, I ask you right now that you would be with us in this service. You would give us of your spirit and grace. And Master, we'll thank you, O Lord, for your great love. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Good. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, brother. <laughs> Wonderful. We're a blessed people to have talented people willing to serve God. Amen. But it is good to be back in the house of the Lord. Uh, I have had a very eventful afternoon. I spent two hours in Cabanaros to get a hamburger patty. That wasn't too bad. But I got a piece of cake to go with it, which I did not need. I didn't take anything home. <laughs> Amen. But we appreciate the goodness of God. His grace is truly all sufficient. Whatever we have need of, God hears and answers our prayer. Amen. Amen. And we thank God for His great grace. If you have your Bibles and will turn with us tonight, I'm going to be speaking out of the fourth chapter of Hebrews, and I'll read a few verses there. And... Uh, we are talking about a subject that is one we don't talk about a whole lot. I don't know why, but we don't talk about it that often. But it is the crux of all that that gives us strength to carry through. I know we're having good times, bad times, all these other times that come along with our relationship with Jesus Christ. I've had people come to me and say, Brother Clark, I don't know why it is that I'm having such a hard time. And I tell them, are you dead yet? You still living in this world? Is the devil still the prince of the air? You're going to have problems. You're going to have troubles. You're going to have tribulations. You're going to have broken hearts. 
You're going to have grief. There will be times when you lament even being born. But see, you have to look beyond that and say, yes, but Jesus. We, we read that this afternoon or this morning. We see Jesus. Everything else falls by the wayside. When we get our mind off of everything else that's happening to us, and they happen. And are we going to have problems with it? Yeah, we have problems with it. I don't like being sick. Sister Stephanie was sick this morning. Had a headache, she said. Amen. But she got up here, led us in the song service. Had a wonderful song service. Had great songs tonight. Some of my favorites. Amen. I asked her how she was feeling. Oh, I'm feeling good now. Praise God. Amen. You know, it will pass. If we give God time enough, we get up and start moving for Him, things will change in our life. I love to get into the house of God. Sometimes I've come in here, right here, and I didn't more feel like being here than I did going to the moon, and I have no desire. I'm not getting on the next rocket. Don't worry. I've been there where I just didn't feel like it. But once I got in here, once I got around the children of God, once I heard the prayers, the songs of Zion, all the other things that were going on, the Word of God as our pastor would bring it, I got excited, forgot all about all my problems. Kind of like my uncle said, when you go fishing, Brother Sweat, and you're sitting there and you don't know how you're going to make it. You don't have the light money. You don't have the gas money. You're not even sure if you have enough in the truck to get back to the house. And you don't know you've been sick all day. You had not been feeling, whoa, all of a sudden you've got something on that line. You forget every problem that you ever had. Amen. You forget everything. And that's how it is with God. You come around Him and His people. Things start changing in your life. Why? Because you come into the house of worship. You've come to praise God. I come to lift Him up. I come to receive of Him. Amen. Nothing else. And when I say I come to receive of God, I don't just come in here looking for uh, with a handful of give me and a mouthful of much obliged. I don't come in here with that kind of want. I come in here to receive of God what he would have in my life. Sometimes he gets over there and thumps me on my pointy little head. And don't look at my hair because it's sick it straight up. That's all four hairs now to be careful. He'll pat me on my pointy little head and let me know, hey, that's not working. Need to make a change. Ooh, I was looking for something where we could shout. Well, let me tell you, if you can't shout about that, shout not in you. All I need is God to communicate with me, and that's exciting. Sometimes it hurts a little bit, but praise God, I can rejoice. But I want to read starting in the fourth chapter of Hebrews with the ninth verse. We're not going to read all of these verses. You can take this home and read them for yourself afterwards. But there remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that is entered into into his rest, he also has ceased from his own works, as God did from His. Let us labor, therefore, to enter into the rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. And that unbelief was those people in the, in the wilderness that backslid on God. And when they didn't accept God's blessing, just go ahead and go I love the fact that Caleb and Joshua come back 
And when they gave their report, it was, in essence, at the very end of it, let's go possess it. God has given it to us. All we have to do is go and possess it. And their doubt was such that they, oh, no, we look like rapsoppers in their eyes. Have you seen how big their cities are and how many soldiers they have? Do you realize how high those walls are? We're not going to ever be able to get anything done. But all the, you stop thinking about things that are impossible out here and start thinking about the possibilities that are in Jesus Christ. We're not going to make it tomorrow. Oh, yes, you are. I, I don't think I'll ever get over this. Oh, yes, you will. There are some of you that are having surgeries. Some of you are having very serious surgeries. Any surgery is serious. But some of you are having sicknesses and problems. We were worried about our pastor, thank God, here twice in the same day, enjoying things, talking about the good things of God, happy about the things of his relationship with Jesus Christ. I love that. I love to get in here and feel that presence of the Lord that I feel in the presence of every one of you. You say, Brother Clark, you go around, shake everybody's old hand, hug everybody's old neck. I sure do. I draw from you. You don't realize it. I'm not out there because I want to bless you. I'm out there to get me a blessing. Amen. I need, I need to hear something from you. I need to hear how God is blessing in your life. I need to hear how that you are having a hard time and how that you're in need of prayer. I want to talk to God on your behalf. Why? Because prayer is the answer of all things. Because when we pray, we pray in the name of he who has the answer to all things. Amen. But here the Bible is talking about God said they are not going, and what it boils down, and what he said in the end of all of that, was they're not going to enter in to my rest. No. Here, Paul speaking to the church at, of the Hebrews there, telling them, don't get caught up in this. Listen to what God has to say. You need to enter into the rest of Christ. I, I talk about it, I looked at it, and it's scripture that I use a lot. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. We're looking for the rest that is in Christ. There are that times I need to feel the victory. Amen? And you want me to tell you when the victory really comes? It's when I'm at my worst. And when things are really the worst, and I can turn my face to the wall and call on the Almighty God because I know that He already sees my plight and He knows what I need. Amen. And He sends that answer. Praise God. Now, Brother Clark, do you get delivered from everything? I get delivered from everything. Amen. When you had that headache the other day, did God deliver you? God delivered me. I had it for two more days, but he delivered me. Amen. He delivered me right then. It wasn't two days later. Why? Because I forgot all about that headache. I had received a blessing from the old high. I had received the blessing from God. I knew that he had heard and answered my prayer. And that was exciting enough. And with a headache and all, I can still shout before the Lord. Why? Because he knows me and he cares for me. Amen. Praise the Lord. All you that labor. We look in there in the very beginning. I told Brother Danny, I said, I'm going to start in Genesis. <laughs> He said, I don't know if I can sit here that long. <laughs> but over in Genesis, we find where the Bible said that God began creating everything. This day he did that. This day he did that. This day he did that. Six whole days. And when he got through with it all, he had said it was, it was good. And then when he put man on the earth, he said, very good. 
And then the Bible said that on the Sabbath day, God rested. Now, don't miss that. God was not tired. He is the omnipotent God. All power is His. He didn't expend any of His power. He still had the same power that He had when He began. He started it all because he spoke it into existence. God is the one that holds all of this together no matter what. If God quit, that would be the end of it. There will be no more. But because he loves us. Amen. Amen. I would that we could really get a hold of how much that God really loves his people. Praise God. Every one of us. If you just go back, and if you get so tired, and you get so depressed, and I know, I saw those three women over there, and they were talking, and I, I know I saw one of them look around there at me. I know they were talking about me. And my feelings have been hurt so bad, I just don't think I can go on. I think I'll just quit. Amen. I can watch Rex Humbard on TV and do just as well. I don't even know if Rex is still alive. <laughs> but I can do it just as well. No, you can't. And no, they weren't. Amen. People come to me and say, Brother Clark, so and so and so and so said so. I said, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. If you know something that somebody is doing again me, don't tell me. I have enough trouble trying to keep myself straight without having to try to pray through because of something that somebody else is supposed to have done. Amen? I don't want to know it. Why? Because I am anchored in Jesus Christ. Amen. I, I feel his joy. I feel his glory. I feel his presence. I don't need to know somebody else has got a problem. People have problems with me. Y'all wouldn't believe it. Amen. You thought everything was just love, peace, and happiness, and everybody going to heaven. It's not. There are those that just, is he back up there again? My Lord, they don't have a monkey they can put up there. I got bananas. Anything. Amen. But it'd be all right. I don't need to know about it. I do the best I can. That's all I can do. I turn myself loose unto God. If I showed you what my notes were, you'd go, Brother Clark, you should have already been done. I probably had, but I'm not. Amen. But come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. I will give you rest. We cannot enter in to the rest of Christ on our own. We can't do it. We may want to. We may try. I put my best foot forward. You ever tried to live for God? Woo! That's a job, man. That's a job. The early church was just coming out from under that kind of oppression. They were just now coming out from under the law. Praise God. Thank God for grace. Amen. That law... It was there to bring us to Christ. After that, thank God, I don't have to live that anymore. I don't have to worry about it. You can come to me and say, yeah, but the Bible back over here. I say, yeah, but the Bible over here said. Amen. And what it says is, His grace is all sufficient. Amen. So I don't have to worry about it. 
I don't have to concern myself about it. All those people of old time, they, they could not live the law. The law was righteous. It was of God. They could not live it. Don't try to live it. Paul said you can't make it. They didn't. You won't. Accept the grace of Jesus Christ. You can't get there. You can work at it. The Bible said that God, knowing the weakness and the frailties of man, He gave them all kinds of sacrifices, all kinds of things that they had to do, all of this, all of that, something, another else, and they had to do that. And once a year, they had to come into the tabernacle of God and come before the priest, present their offering before the Lord that he would go into the Holy of Holies and take that offering and pray for them that God would forgive their sin. Now, you mean to tell you what was going on? Sin was already on them before they left the building. There was no deliverance of sin, but God provided that. And because they were faithful to do that, he imputed that unto them for righteousness. But see, when Christ came, that changed. Amen. That changed. He went to the cross one time. The Bible said we had to, they had to appoint and elect or select or ever how they got it all done, a high priest, ever so often. Whatever that it was. But see, we have one high priest. And he is a high priest forever. After the order of Melchizedek, he is there forever. We don't have to go to another. We don't have to hope that he's taken our interest and in going into the Holy of Holies and actually get asking God to forgive us of our sin. But he's done that which is right in the sight of the Lord. No, we don't have to worry about that. Because we have one sacrifice, and his name is Jesus. Jesus said, let us labor, therefore, to enter into the rest of Lest any man fall, just the way they did in the desert, let us find that rest in Christ. Let us find the rest. We need that. Now, let's talk about rest. I will give you rest. The Bible said that this is the rest of God. What is rest? Rest, above all things, probably is renewal. Amen. Every creature on the earth runs out of gas every now and then. We have to have a rest time. That rest time says I can renew. I love that because, see, when it gets down to where I'm pushing, it seems like instead of pulling on a rope, I'm pushing a rope. I can stop. And I can say, Lord, I need a little rest. I need to renew. I need a change. We can have a renewal in Jesus Christ. We have a recovery that comes with rest. Things are bad enough in life without having to go through the same thing over and over and over and over. I know people... Has my little time that I have in around Christian people about 50 something years. And all of that time, you see those that are never satisfied with coming into the house of God, worshiping the Lord with all of their mind, body, soul, and spirit, not happy to get along with everybody and speak to everyone, talk about praying for one another. They got to have a rip it going. Amen. Brother Danny, just calm down. Everything's fine. <laughs> they got to rip it going all the time. 
and can never be satisfied. I spot and mark people like that. I'm not that strong. I can't, I can't take everything. And if I get around that, Brother David, it won't be long. I'll be sitting there listening to it. And if I listen to it long enough, I'll be repeating it. So what I do is I just, you're not going to say anything, are you, Brother Clark? Nope, I'm not. I'm going right over here. I have enough, I told you, getting through my stuff without having to bring somebody else's stuff in. And it's all it is is stuff. It never, it never amounts to anything. And let me tell you how you stop a lot of that. Did you hear what sister so-and-so said? No, I did not. What was it? She said so-and-so and so-and-so. Oh, she did? Let's go ask her about it. Rut row. <laughs> Rut row. Let's go ask her about it. I'm going to go right over there right now and ask her about it. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe it wasn't quite that way. And then they'll, they'll um, no. You want me to tell you how many times they'll come back to you with things like that? No, sir, because I won't, let it, I won't let it happen. There's an answer, and the answer is right over there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Then we have peace that comes from the rest of God. Peace that passeth all understanding. A peace from God. A peace that I can say everything is under control. I don't have to worry. I have it. Right over here in Jesus Christ. I'm not concerned about it. I'm not worried about it. God has it. I have a peace, a settled peace that comes upon my soul. I love that. I love to be able to walk into the house of God. I, need, I, love, I love to see people come and pray around these altars. I pray right back there in that pew many a time. I talk to God. I'll talk to Him. I talk to Him this afternoon. I talked to him this morning. I talked to him when I first woke up. I love to talk to God because he talks back. Amen. He hears my prayer. And I speak to him. And because of that, I come through the house of God with a total peace. Brother Cribb, a total peace. A total peace. When I enter in here, I'm not frustrated. I'm not upset. I don't have a, a great uh, axe to grind with anybody. And let me tell you something. If it ever comes down to a point where I feel like I have an axe to grind, I won't go to y'all. I'll go to you. And before I get started, I'll ask you to forgive me. Amen? Amen? Because I want that to be the, the central part of our conversation. Forgive me. If I feel like I've done you wrong, stand still. I'll be there in a little bit. I mean it. I'll come to you and ask you to forgive me. And I'll say it from the heart. I won't say it off my lips. I'll say it from my heart. Forgive me. Why? Because I love the peace of God. I love that rest in Jesus Christ where that I can hold my head up. I don't have to be ashamed. I don't have to be afraid. But I know that God knows me. I know Him. And He knows that I care. He's a solace. He brings us out. He delivers He's a comfort. I have that comfort in the rest of Christ. I have rededication in that rest. When you enter into that rest, all the old things are passed away. Behold, the new, old things become new. 
you get an you get an opportunity to look at yourself not everybody else thank God for his rest I can look right into here because he's given me that rest he's given me that peace and I can go to him in prayer and I can with confidence come before the throne of grace why because he has tore the veil from top to bottom I can enter in rededication repurpose that rest that I have I repurpose things can go awry in your life Paul said to the church one time you started well who did hinder you what happened now from what I gather out of that they probably didn't even know there was a problem but when Paul confronted them about that you started well you knew what to do but somewhere down the line you drifted off at you under somewhere what happened you can turn around and turn back to God you can repurpose you can recenter your life in Jesus only in this rest can you do that you can't do that when you're out here in the turmoil and the fighting and the, the trying to survive trying to live for God forget it you won't but if you find his grace it's all sufficient you'll make it you'll think everything else is falling apart but it's not his grace is sufficient for everyone we recuperate we recover in his peace in his rest we can recover why because I can stop long enough to turn to God and say Lord I thank you for this time together find that place in Christ Lord have mercy what a blessing that it is to find the rest that is in Jesus Christ get over there and uh, you know we don't do the closet scene anymore yeah we do I can do the closet scene in the middle of town why because I stopped long enough to speak to God I stopped long enough to say Lord hear my prayer Lord I want to rededicate my life I need to redirect my life I need to turn around and find you in my life alive and well we can recuperate we can rejuvenate the hope that we have in Christ amen I can be rejuvenated I can get reestablished I can get thrilled again how many remember when you first got saved do you remember amen some of y'all were still working on it. but it was a wonderful time you remember oh yeah it was a little piece of happiness everybody going to heaven wasn't a nasty neck in your house you couldn't go kiss I mean it was a wonderful time you started well who did hinder you when you come into the house of the Lord every time you walk around the people of God every time that you're out in the middle of the community every time you're alone with yourself you need to know that joy that comes from knowing the Lord that needs to be alive and well in your life you need to rejuvenate that you need to re-excite that. Whatever it is, let Christ come into your life. We can't enter into this on our own. But through Jesus Christ, we can rest. We can find these things again in our life if we just stop just a few more minutes and just center ourselves in Him. Ever so often, I know we have the hustle and the bustle 
of everything going on in our life. Jobs rough. People don't want to cooperate. You have employees or, or people that work with your fellow employees that won't get along. Stop. Stop. Find a spot. It don't have to be a million miles off. Just turn and find a spot. Lord, I need the rest of Jesus in my life. I need you to take over my soul. Lord, I need you to move right now. I'm feeling the pressure of this life. And I need to know that you hear me and that you care. And let me tell you, when you walk back out of that, yep, 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 yep. I don't know. Didn't hear that. You're talking to the hand. One of them kind. We don't know about it because God already knows about it. And he's reached into my life and changed things one more time. One more time. Let us pray. Father God in heaven, I thank you for this night. I thank you that, God, that you have prepared for us a joy that is unspeakable and full of glory. I thank you, Lord, that you have set us apart, that, Lord, that time that we can feel of you, Lord, we can know you, for, God, we know that you know us. And, Father, if there be one in this house tonight that doesn't know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, I pray, Lord, that you would speak to that life right now. If there are those in this house tonight that are having the turmoils and troubles of life and they don't know how to get rid of them, Lord, let your rest settle upon them. Let them seek your face. And God, we will praise you for your deliverance, for, Lord, your goodness and kindness. Father, for your grace. And Lord, we thank you one more time for our pastor being able to be out with us today, for all of these that are able to be out. Father, I thank you, God. You have worked a miracle. And Lord, we bless you right now in Jesus' loving and holy name. Amen. Amen.